Good morning, Wadarapa. It's uh, Anna Cardno here from Wadarapa DHB, and we are with you every Wednesday morning on Arrow <coughs> FM with Wrap Around Wadarapa, a show where we talk about all sorts of things that are provided for uh, you in the community, health services, and and other social services that are that are here um, for you that some people just don't necessarily know about. Uh, but on the show, we get into all sorts of excitement, and today we have Rachel Clark with us. Morning, Rachel. Good morning. Now, Rachel is our guru, um, somebody that all of our young people should know and love. Rachel is in charge of our youth dental service. Now, she's going to tell us all about why all those people out there under the age of 18 need to take advantage of our free dental service. Rachel, tell us why. Thank you. Well, I mean, basically, it's free. So I think it's an amazing opportunity to take advantage of a free service. And I encourage people to do that. Um, 30% of our young people are not accessing this free dental care. Um, 30%? 30%. don't access. Who doesn't access free stuff? Um, well, exactly. <laughs> 30% That's a good of question. people. Who doesn't access free stuff? Um, so I think the service has been around for a really long time. I think generally people do know it's free. Um, you know, I kind of wondered if that was a barrier when I first started a couple of that years people ago. That people didn't know didn't about know it. know that it's free, but I think people do know that it's free. But I just think sometimes life gets in the way. And, you know, when people go to the community dental clinic or they're going to the mobile buses um, that go to the schools, I mean, that is just such a well-managed service. They are so well looked after. They get lots of reminders, lots and lots of follow-up. And then what happens, there's a transition in year eight. They fill out that form saying, where do I want to go to the dentist for my college years? And um, But that form is filled out anywhere across the duration of year eight. So sometimes by the time people get to college, they've forgotten what they said or they can't quite remember or they've, you know, they then move across to that service and maybe with the loss of really intensive follow-up, people's phone numbers change, people move, people change districts. So those are all the sorts of things that I do really intensive follow-up around yeah. those. I can tell when who hasn't been um, using, you know, kind of DA hospital system. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that seems to be some of the reasons. And so I just encourage people that if they hear this and they're a parent or a grandparent or a carer and they're thinking dentist mm, mm. having a bit of a blank moment there where is my young person going to the dentist that they just they go can, to their yeah. their dentist and say don't think i've been for a while can you check for me um and just get along and get in because mostly we kind of know who who our dentist is and if we can't easily think of that then I kind of think maybe the mm. young person hasn't managed to get along. And so it still it needs some parent support to help that young person to make their first visit or their second visit and start to get into that routine of going annually to the dentist. So it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, I talked to Lynette Field, who, as we know, is fabulous, and she manages the, the younger persons, the, the yeah. um, child service. And I talked to her a lot, and in fact she was on the show not so long ago, and I talked to her about the fact that, or she says, the fact that the teeth and the mouth is the window to the health of the person, you know, so, yeah. you know, everything, you know, it's 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 where we eat, it's, it's you know, everything goes through our mouth, and she said, that, you know, what, what uh, the nutritional value, what the child's eating, you know, how they're living at home, she'll be able to pick all that up through from the teeth, and the fact that the the service is free from the beginning. It just seems a bit strange, doesn't it? That people, they get to those college years and they've had all that wonderful care and that they don't sort of expect that, well, obviously 30% of people don't sort of expect that that will continue. When they fill out that form in year eight that they have to stipulate who their dentist mm. will be, does that dentist then follow up themselves with those people? Do they get that? Yeah, so Four. those those forms are um, handed over to the dentist just before Christmas of yep. every year. 
and then across the summer and the early part of the year, even possibly up until the end of term one, you know, yep. for some, den- you know, there's quite a lot of them. You yeah, know. sure. It's probably um, hundreds yep. that we're dealing with. Mm. Um, but then they will try to make contact. And then that's sometimes where the first glitch occurs because people's phone numbers don't work. Yeah, of course. And so that's when they come back to me um, mm-hmm. and, and I try to use hospital systems to Absolutely, yeah. So so that's a, a first kind of stumbling block. So if you haven't heard from a dentist, if your child's in year nine and you haven't heard from a dental practice by now, for sure, yeah. like, what are we up to, early June, June mid-year, you know, mm-hmm. even the end of the first term, I would be ringing who you think you mm. put down like your local dentist i'd be ringing your local dentist um and saying you know have you got my child on your box mm. and can i make an appointment you know it's a two-way process like well it is well the dentists um do lots and lots of work or the, the you know the reception do lots of work um to try and follow people up uh, you know, you totally ring mm. the dentist mm. yourself mm. and say, oh, "Get in feels, touch and be proactive." Like ages like um, when was the last appointment, or can't actually really remember. Getting along since um, my mm. child started college, you know, give give the dentist a call. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, and I know Lynette, and and it's totally right. That whole thing um, about the mouth being the centre of well being that is mm-hmm. where everything starts. And there's much more, much more research now about the impact of our oral health our dental health Mm. on everything else um and that becomes even more important as we age but as a young person you know it's about having that having that mouth feeling good Mm. having a good smile there's a lot of confidence around that isn't there that whole you know being able to smile and being confident about showing your teeth and all of those things it does a whole lot for a child's self-esteem does it i mean there's so much more that goes with the whole package of dentistry and looking after your oral health isn't it because you know we we all know (laughs) Uh, these days there's such a focus on children's well-being mental health um, you know the impacts of society and the difficulties of today and how that impacts on kids Mm. Um, you know something as simple as as practicing good dental hygiene and going to your dentist once a year can really help with that it can it can and I think the other thing to say for young people is like go go make team appointments Make family appointments, you know, go with a sibling, um, encourage parents to kind of keep going with their children through this time if they can. I, you know, our, our lives get very busy, but if you can, at least for year nine, year 10, get them into that habit, help them to make sure that they're going because what we're doing is we're kind of building that habit for life. This is mm. what this five years is about. You know, mm. they've had all that intensive follow up through the primary school program and then what we want to do as parents for the first few years and and even through you know to to year 13 keep helping them to get along so that they've had five years of getting into that habit because I know having had three young women myself that there was definitely a couple of gap years there after they left school you know um, and I'd do a little bit of bribery and say well if you get along and you get you know a good um, check and you don't have any fillings you know there's, there's a but it wasn't much it was 10 bucks but <laughs> there's a bit of money in it for you and and sometimes I mean I'm lucky I could say look I'll I'll shout you a visit sort of thing mm. and not everybody can do that which is why these five years are so essential to get that that um oh health that, that care. smile in good shape while it's free absolutely Make the most of it. while it's free <laughs> because i know it is you know the thought of going to the dentist even you know for someone like myself the thought of going to the dentist a we don't love it do we yeah. like seriously we don't love going to the dentist and we don't love paying for it because it is actually really expensive yeah. and then yeah. when we have children that require braces for example there's a lot of dollars that go and that are attached yeah. to that so you know your role I often feel is it's a really tough one you know I don't envy you because what you're doing and what Lynette's doing and you're both such great sort of effervescent vibrant people which is brilliant because you need to be because you're encouraging people to go to you know uh, a dental surgery that they don't really 
ever really want to be at, do they? Yeah. I mean, as wonderful yeah. as most of our dentists are and the lovely people and the hygienists are fabulous, they make the experience really good, but no one loves it, right? So yeah. you're encouraging people to go along. So yeah. the carrot, obviously, up until they're 18, is the fact that it is a free service. Yeah. People can have, um, you know, take, they've got no excuse not to have a good mouth and take care of any mm. holes that they have, have the fillings, do the stuff. But it's really about growing that really good habit, as you say. Yeah. Because I would hedge a bet that the 30% that aren't taking advantage of the free dental service are probably from families where the parents don't routinely go to the dentist otherwise it would be in front of them would be top of mind wouldn't it because when mum yeah. would go along to the dentist yeah. you would immediately think well hang on how about my kids yeah so that's yeah. where I think you're getting building that a fam- yeah. building a family habit it's, yeah. it's about making it um, apparent to people that looking after your oral health is as important as the rest of you yeah what I, I, it's something I've never really understood is why we sort of separate it out mm. so when people go to the doctor and we have we understand about going to the doctor when we're sick and we really prioritise mm. our own health but our Oral health is always something sort of set quite separate. Mm, mm. Where, how did that even happen to begin with? Do you think that that the mouth is considered so different to the rest of our body? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's probably... just it's an odd it's an odd thing. Yeah, beyond my pay grade. I mean, I'm you know I'm a nurse, not a, a dental therapist. Mm. You know, I come from a nursing background mm. and kind of have. Mm gone into this through health coordination so you know that whole history is exciting to know that actually I don't know if you talked to Lynette about this that the oral health service has just celebrated a hundred years absolutely of dental therapists exciting and um, um you know and I think what I would say about that is you know dental therapy as with health as with medical care you know it's transformed along the way and and this is what my dentist would say to me, and I ha- I have a beautiful dentist now, and I think of it as um, touch therapy. You know, just I go to sleep actually, um, so I might be a bit unusual. She says. <laughs> I think you might be a little bit unusual. <laughs> but it's n- it's a pain free experience. Yeah. You know, there's gels, there's you know, there's anaesthetics, there's there's very very gentle dental care now, and so it's about. Um, taking your time with it and Mm. kind of as I know they do at the community dental clinic and just building up that trust and um, you know being able to go along with family or with mates it's a you know it's a it's a bit of a clinic feeling environment when you go to a a dental center but you know go with someone that's going to help you to feel comfortable and supported Mm. and Mm. feel a bit nervous you know let them know yeah absolutely and And it's come a long way since you know um I I feel sometimes that I'm about a hundred, but I'm I'm not. But I'm probably I'm half of that. And I remember my experiences when I was a child, uh, going to the dental service or going to get getting my teeth done. It was quite a it was quite a scary thing. It's a whole different ball game now, isn't it? I mean, it's, I remember having taken my children along to the community um, oral health centre, and, and I remember uh, Lynette working with my kids, and they loved it. They used to skip into um, into that. Um, yeah. you know the rooms at, at MIS there and they, yeah. they used to skip in they used to just love it yeah and it's um because it was so fun yeah you know and yeah. I think that's neat and I think maybe Wairapa is a bit unique but we do have a great service for those young ones that, can, that come through and I think that then builds the expectation and, and the understanding that dental care is something that we do something that we can actually yeah. enjoy and celebrate and um and something we need to be in a routine for you know on that annual annual basis and that, then if we can carry it pick through. Up on that. So what what the um, free service offers is it's an annual checkup, so that's once a year. Um, and then the standard treatment that comes out of that. And you mentioned braces before and I often have the conversation with people who tell me that their child is going to an orthodontist and I, you know, had a child who lost her two front teeth when she was about twelve. Oh, falling dear. off the curb. Everybody knows this happens. And that's a long journey because you have to wait until you're 21 to have the repair, until your teeth and your mouth have kind oh, of really? fully formed. So she was going to an orthodontist all that time. Luckily, thank you, ACC. But but you've still got to have the dental care because mm. orthodontic work, that's a specialty. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Dentist, dentists do the standard care. So mm. even if your child is going to an orthodontist, do still go for those annual dental checkups. Mm-hmm. And then, and it's not a clean because that's extra. That's a special thing. But it's all the treatment that is required to keep your mouth in a healthy state mm-hmm. until the next year. Mm-hmm. Um, some people, and why I say people, I've come to the realisation that, that people know it's free because suddenly some 17-year-olds will suddenly be like, oops, panic, um, better get myself along. And so there can be a little burst, mm-hmm. certainly doesn't take up the whole 30%, but there can be a little burst um, mm-hmm. at 17 where suddenly people realise, oops, haven't been, haven't been for a while, um, better get myself along. And so... We're now working now that we're I'm um, a couple of years into it. We're um, working more intensively um, when people are turning seventeen and a half mm-hmm. on doing follow up in that six month period. So if you're seventeen or seventeen and a half and you have not been to the dentist for what feels like forever, you probably haven't. Just go to anybody and book mm. yourself in mm, mm. and make the most of that and availability use, use of treatment that service, to you. Absolutely and head use off it. to uni or your job or wherever you're going after school with a nice confident smile that you can be proud yeah. of. Yeah. What I say jokingly to people over the phone is it's free. Why wouldn't you use it? It's government money. <laughs> <laughs> We're all paying for it in our taxes, right? And we all pay taxes, all of us. That's absolutely right. So, that's absolutely you know, right. And and you know <laughs> When we talk about, you know, government money, the the reality is that we don't provide anything nationally unless there is a very good purpose for it, right? Yep. So we've got a free service for kids up to the age of 18 to get dental care. Now, there's yes. a reason for that. It's because dental yep. care is incredibly important. Yes, exactly. And we know that if we build those good habits um, at the younger ages... And those kids are then, they're 18, they're adult, they're going off to live their own lives and do what they do. A lot of the time people are leaving home for the first time, you know, either going to university, going to jobs, going, you know, leaving Wairapa, going elsewhere. And if they've got those really good habits now about going and prioritising dental care, then perhaps that will be something that becomes, you know, forms part of their budget and how they, you know, choose to look after themselves going forward, which yeah. is a good thing. It's about building those habits, building isn't it? That habit. That's yeah. really important. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 I I always I do find it really bizarre that we don't treat um teeth and oral health the same as we do the rest of our body and I, I do wonder if maybe part of that is about the fact that we don't in the Wairarapa anyway we don't have that oral health care as part of our hospital facility or you know it's not it's not um, hand in hand with a medical practice you know we don't go to our our integrated health care and go to the doctor in one door and the dentist in the next door you know it's not it's not seen in the same light yes yeah, so at they all are kind of separate services mm. that's right um i was going to say something then lifelong habit yes it's absolutely lifelong habit but i must mention i mean as i said i'm not a dental therapist but i like everybody else know that there's some very simple messages about your looking after your teeth and it's brush twice a day use a fluoride toothpaste don't don't rinse anymore you just you just spit this oh really yes you just mm-hmm. spit because that keeps that little bit of fluoride on mm-hmm. the teeth mm-hmm. flossing once a day so you know, I have to remind myself to be good and do these things and do the two minutes and, mm-hmm. you know, so um, it, it's building those daily habits as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, again, as the as the parent of children, you know, you, you spend quite a long time when they're young, don't you, helping them with their, with their dental care. And that goes on. You need, kind of need to give that support for much longer than you think you do and... Mm. probably even reminders for teenagers I'm sure wouldn't go astray every now and again but But it's that twice a day habit yeah twice a day brushing flossing once a day at least and that's that's also the beginning of a good routine lifelong lifelong absolutely our teeth are there and they've got to last us for a very long time they do they do (laughs) and as you know as we are um developing and you know the way the way it works now is people are living a lot longer than they used to aren't they now so our teeth are with us for a very long time you know it it used to be very unusual for people to be in their 90s and now it's really quite common isn't it very common i was talking to a 
wonderful woman the other day, actually, who rang me um, and she was wanting to know about COVID vaccination. And uh, she rang me and she was chatting away and she lived in, she lived in, where was she? I think she was living in Greytown. And we were chatting away and she was talking about driving and bringing her friends in. And then she let it slip that she was 94 years old, living on her own. And she was going to round up all her friends who also were around the same age and living on their own. And she would, she had just got her driver's license renewed and she was telling me all about that it was gorgeous and um and she was going to round them all up and bring them in for their covid vaccination and she wanted me to book them in it was just hysterical and she was you know i was talking about what great genes she must have had to be you know living till that ripe old age and having her um driver's license renewed and she was she, it was quite hysterical, actually. And she was telling me how she had many friends in the same bracket, all living on their own in their own residence. They weren't part of an age residential care facility because we were vaccinating age residential care facility. Um, uh, we were going there to vaccinate. So the, these women had to come to us. Um, she was telling us about renewing her driver's licence and um, and how she had to be... They give you, when you're that age, this is completely irrelevant to dentistry, but it's a good story. So <laughs> she was telling the story about how she had to... For her driver's licence, they give you a list of names, I think it was, that she had to remember, and they, they read them all out at the beginning of the test and then at the end she has to repeat them back and that's around you know her cognitive state and and um making sure that she's not um you know has got dementia or she gets you know (laughs) i said there's no way i would remember those and she said i know i asked the i asked the driving instructor um if they could do it and they said no no they couldn't she said it was a young woman but um she said she couldn't remember but these oldies have to remember this list of names and then repeat it back yeah i mean that would put it i mean you know I, i i probably aren't very good with road rules either but i would rather be tested on my road rules than on my memory, exactly. I'm sure. <laughs> I think there's something in there. I mean, my dad's um, 93, and um, so I feel very lucky about that. But but there are some additional challenges that young people have now that those older people didn't have, mm. and our diet is one of them. Yeah. I mean, these older people grew up post-war, depression, very frugal diets yep. at their age, um, you know, all the basics. A lot more growing your own, having you know, a veggie garden. A lot garden. more growing your own, mm. cooking your own, even though they used to boil the vegetables for a long time, like my mother. But, um, <laughs> you know, and, and and I think those habits, when you yeah. talk about life-forming habits, I mean, my father, to a degree, still eats a very, what some people might call a frugal diet or very ordinary, you know, it's the breakfast, lunch, sa- sandwich, small tea, you know, yeah. all that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Whereas now there's sugary drinks everywhere you look. There's um, chocolates and chocolates and sweets. And it's normal, isn't and it? It's not a treat. It's a normal part of the day. And, and it's just, and so, you know, that's another big message now. Oh, who's the girl who does that? Um her name's gone out of my mind, um, the, some champion, one of the sports champion, you know, works with New Zealand Dental Council to promote water. Mm. You know, I mean, drinking water mm-hmm. in between and saving those sugary drinks. I mean, we all have them, but save them for a treat. Mm. Try to think about having them with a meal mm. so that it's all kind of concentrated together because one of the other things is it's, that it's the constancy of it. Whereas if you kind of do your, do your breakfast do your lunch, do your dinner, which is what the older people do, very mm-hmm. little of the, the mm-hmm. kind of so much of the snacking, that makes a difference as well. So mm-hmm. I just saw something on Facebook the other day. Um, one of the DHBs, I think it's why Cuttle, has um, just affirmed their, their good food policy and they're removing all sugary drinks from anywhere in the hospital at all and a lot of the schools are adopting this same measure as well so that sugary drinks plays a big part. It is really so important. Water, water, water. Yeah, brushing, absolutely. Brushing, brushing, brushing. But kosher, the yeah. usual free dental care. Usual free dental care. You know, yeah. what it up a DHB, well, I think most of the DHBs have that healthy food policy. We, yeah. we don't we don't sell sugary drinks in the cafeteria and, and those yeah. sorts of things and yeah. we, we really do recommend that, um, that parents don't allow their younger children to get that habit of, you know, buy the Coke and get used to it as being yeah. a normal everyday occurrence. Absolutely. And, um, you know, it used to be, I, I 
I remember as a as a mum, it used to be that it wasn't until your children started going to kindy and started going to birthday parties, and it was usually around that sort of age four kind of mark that they would have lemonade for the first time, you know, because we didn't offer it to children mm. in in our house. And but they'd start to go to the parties. There, there becomes a time where what the parents, you know, how the parents set the child up is no longer relevant because their social experiences gives them all of those kind of um, treats and and um, and they you know, social media now is really bad for that too, isn't it? But mm. but you know. McDonald's is an everyday thing you know takeaways is an everyday thing it's right there in people's faces and it just becomes normal back in our day it was a real treat you know yes. that you'd yeah. you'd get a pizza once a month or something like that and that was that was your treat but yeah. it's just it's just out there I think it makes it really tough for parents doesn't it trying it to keep their child healthy in the environment that we create and as much as we can you know um, advocate for drinking water and and fresh vegetables and all of those things it's a really hard road when you've got all of that you know powerhouse advertising out oh, there absolutely. for for all absolutely. of these baddie bits yeah. that's yeah that's yeah. really there Right in front of people's faces all of the time. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I remember talking with Lynette, you know, the the, the younger uh, youth oral health, a child um, community dental service, um, and she was saying that that children, you know, right from babies, uh, mothers and, and, you know, parents need to be aware that right from babies they need to be thinking about their oral health and I think that's something else again isn't it Mm. right from birth actually your mouth is really important yes and I remember you're sort of rubbing the gums and when the baby teeth come through and how you look after it and you know it's probably a little bit disappointing and quite confusing that you have to advocate so hard for the um for the service that you provide from 13 to 18 year old because it should really be cemented at that point it should just be a natural progression but we're still missing that 30 percent of people we're still missing that 30%, so it's about phone numbers, it's about moving house, it's about busy lives, it's, sometimes it's about transport, we're a rural district, so, you know, some of the dental practices, I can't tell you which one specifically off the top of my head, but, you know, see if they've got after hours services, some of them offering late night services, there might be the odd one that's offering, um, you know, weekend service, a Saturday morning or something, make it work for you, make it when you're in town, um, some people have children going away boarding so then it's this decision as to whether the boarding school if they're going out of area will manage it because we're rural district we do have quite mm-hmm. a number of young people who go on board so sometimes it's will the boarding house manage it or um, not the boarding you know what I mean the school yeah, boarding absolutely. matron yeah, yeah you know probably using the wrong terms here um or we used to have all sorts of very interesting names for people like that. <laughs> I went to boarding school and they always had very interesting names, our matrons. Yes. But yeah, absolutely. Not just matron, yes. <laughs> but or is it that you do it when they come home? And, you know, do you book the whole family in mm. at the same time and do it all in one hit mm. sort of thing? And then, do, the and then do, you know, something yeah. afterwards together, something that's fun, go to the pool or... Uh, family outing to be. the dentist doesn't have quite the <laughs> ring to it that, but yeah no absolutely it does it does make sense yeah. I wonder if also um, I need to as comms manager for the DHB have that in my diary as a regular um, you know start of the school term first term sort of thing right if you are in year nine yeah. don't forget to yeah yeah so yeah. I think I think probably probably yeah. that would help wouldn't it if we yeah. start, did some some more it's just about getting that cementing it as to this is actually part of your yeah. every day and something that you need to factor in yeah. is yes you should go to your doctor once a year for an annual checkup and while you're at it make sure you book your dentist appointment as well yes yeah yeah mm. yeah so it's year nine by mid-year have you been if you haven't, give the dental practice a call or mm. give the community dental clinic a call and they'll take a message for you for me. Mm. Um, and then definitely by the time they get into um, year, year 10, the end of year 10, you're definitely thinking, oh, God, they've been to the dentist. Mm. And then by it's the time free. it's year 13, Go. it's free. <laughs> and then by the time they're year 13, it's like, you know, I, I mean, I do a lot of individualised follow-up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. I try and ring people. I say, I'm just checking in on details, just trying to find out if you're still with that dentist, are you going somewhere else, are you still in the district? But um, by the time they're heading towards that, get into 18, mm. 
you know, I'm just like, please encourage your young Absolutely. person to get along. Um, if they're still at home, yeah. can you help them? If they're not at home, can you give them the message? Yeah. Get themselves along to a get dentist. Get yourself along to the dentist we know before some you young turn 18. Do leave home before it's they're 18, and then it's on their shoulders. Absolutely. So, so you know. it's free, age 13 to 18, yeah. free dental care once a year. Call your dentist. Get along. That's the message. Mm-hmm. Get there. Right. Well, that's the end of our show. And thank you so much for coming along. Thank Rachel. you for having me again. Anna. Lovely to Always see good you. To talk to you.